We begin today's word list with the word ardor. And that means intense and passionate feeling. I think of it as a close synonym of just the word passion. I have great ardor for this subject, great passion for it, very intense feeling about it. Ardor, meaning passion. Next word, arrogate, interesting word. To claim without justification, to claim for oneself without right. Usually using the phrase to themselves or to itself. They arrogated to themselves the right to do as they please. He arrogated to himself the claim of ownership. He arrogated to himself the title of leader. No one else gave him that title. Didn't quite have the right to claim that. To arrogate to themselves or to himself itself, etc. Next word, assail. To assault, to attack. The walls were assailed by the enemy's siege weapons. Or she felt assailed, metaphorically, by the constant criticisms of her. Attacked, assaulted, assailed. Unconscionable. Interesting word to pronounce. Unconscionable. Unscrupulous, shockingly unfair or unjust. Those war crimes are simply unconscionable. They can't rest on our consciences. Our consciences, our moral principles just can't take them. We can't sleep at night. Our souls can't stand that. It's unconscionable because it is shockingly unfair, unjust, evil even. One could say torture is unconscionable without scruple, unscrupulous. Unequivocal, absolute, certain. To equivocate is to not decide between different options. So to be unequivocal is to be clear, certain, decided, absolute. He was unequivocal in his denunciation of terrorists. Certain and absolute. Upbraid, lovely word, not in any of the other lists. To scold sharply. He was upbraided for his rancorous behaviour. Scolded, told off, castigated, upbraided, told off sternly to upbraid. Hermetic, tightly sealed. A bit like a hermit is sealed off from the world. To be hermetic is to be tightly sealed off from something. Often used with the word seal. So a hermetically sealed prison, separated from the rest of the world like Alcatraz. Again, linking to hermit, sealed off from the world. Hermetic, tightly sealed. Hoary, very old, whitish or grey from age. The hoary gentleman is basically meaning this is a very old guy, he's probably got white hair. A less common word these days actually, probably because it sounds like another word, but yeah, hoary spelt this way, H-O-A-R-Y, means very old, grey often hair from age. One day Philip will be a hoary old man <laughs> at some point, hopefully not too soon. Ascetic, concerning the appreciation of beauty. To say there were ascetic considerations means that there were considerations about how it would look, how attractive it would be. Or, you have a wonderful ascetic, you have a wonderful appearance. Or, you have interesting ascetic tastes, interesting tastes in beauty. It's all revolving around beauty and appearance, ascetic. Attenuate, more common word, to reduce in force or degree, to weaken. My position at the firm had become attenuated, weakened. I was soon going to be fired. Link to the word tenuous. Augury. Prophecy, prediction of events. The oracle gave a detailed augury of how things would go. Link to the word to augur. Have you heard of the phrase, oh, that augurs well? That's kind of like saying there are good omens. That sounds like it's going to go well. It bodes well. Linked to the word augury, which is a prophecy or a prediction. Affected. Phony, artificial. I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, what about the verb? She is affected by him. She is influenced or impacted by him. Yes, that is one way to use the word as a verb. To be affected by someone or to affect the course of events. But you can also say something is affected. As in an adjective. And if you say, oh, that's affected, you're saying that's put on, 
That's not real. It's phony. It's artificial. She put on an affected accent when speaking to other professionals. A fake accent. All that emotion is truly affected. It's phony. It's not genuine. So there's a new word there you can learn. Aggrandize. To increase in power, influence and reputation. For example, that merger was intended to aggrandize the brand of the umbrella company to increase its power, influence and reputation. Make more grand, aggrandize. Grand being powerful, famous. Declivity, a rarer word, a downward slope. Linked to the word decline, a declivity is a downward slope, a fancy word for a downward slope. Husband. To manage economically to use sparingly. So obviously you're all thinking husband and wife, but to husband something, and this is the original etymology of the word husband and wife as well, is the person who manages the economy, usually the household finances, which is where the word husband came from. But husband in this sense as a verb means to be careful with that resource. So she husbanded the company finances very carefully guarded them, used them sparingly. So husband is not only a noun, it's also a verb, meaning to be in charge of the finances in a careful, diligent way. To husband your resources. Bet you didn't know that one. Not many people do. Equivocate. Well, we saw that earlier. Do you remember what unequivocal means? Unequivocal means certain, direct, decision made. So equivocate, as I said at the time, means to use expressions of double meaning to mislead. Essentially, not clear, not absolute, not certain. So it's like hesitating, wavering, being indecisive. But there is also a slight connotation, as they point out, of you doing it a bit misleadingly. Like maybe in your mind, you've made up a decision. But when you're asked, you're like, mm, well, I don't know, there are pros and cons. Maybe a better example is, Someone asks their manager, are you going to fire that employee? And the manager says, well, we're going to be looking at the contracts of various people. They're not willing to be direct and clear and say, yes, they're going to fire that person. They're using expressions that have different meanings. Well, they're going to look at the contracts, which actually kind of means, yes, they're probably going to fire people. So they're kind of misleading you slash hesitating over whether to be honest. They are equivocating. The opposite of being unequivocal, absolute and clear. Lovely word. Decorous. Proper, tasteful, socially correct. Following the rules of decorum. Decorum meaning appropriate behaviour. If someone is doing that, they are being decorous. Proper and tasteful. Deleterious. Fantastic word. Seen that come up a few times in the GRE. Subtly or unexpectedly harmful. That drink, if you have it enough, can be really deleterious to your health. Or this exercise is great for your back, but if you lift too heavy a weight, it can be deleterious. Subtly, unexpectedly harmful to you. A bit like the word delete, I guess. Demagogue. A leader or rabble rouser usually appealing to emotion or prejudice. So a common misunderstanding is to think a demagogue just means a leader, but no, it's an insulting word meaning they're stirring up prejudice, stirring up emotion. And there's another word, demagoguery, just full of ideologies and dogmas and someone who is not to be respected, maybe to be feared, but not respected. They like to stir up crowds. They are a demagogue. Demure, to express doubts or objection. Interesting word to use in a sentence, actually. So it could be something like this. I normally go to Starbucks for my morning coffee, but this morning I demurred. I normally agree to go to work drinks on a Friday night, but this evening I demurred, meaning I objected, I rejected that opportunity. So this definition on the screen feels quite active, whereas usually the word is somewhat passive, meaning to reject something or just not do something. Another good example would be to use the phrase without demure. So, they accepted the ruling without demure, without expressing any doubts or without avoiding it or rejecting it. They just accepted it without demure. So two good ways of using the word. One, 
normally I do something, but this time I demurred, and the other one, I accepted that thing without demure. And those two ways of using the word demure, you might not get from the definition, but that's how to do it. Raconteur, a witty, skillful storyteller. This guy kept the party entertained for hours. He's an amazing raconteur. Witty, coming up with clever stories, anecdotes, tales, has the audience in the palm of his hand. A raconteur. Ersatz, fantastic word, meaning fake. But I would say fake in a particular way. Fake as an imitation or copy. Or you might say her face showed ersatz emotion. Fake, not genuine emotion. Ersatz. Erudite. Learned, scholarly, bookish. By the way, notice how I pronounce that first word, learned. It's not learned. Learned is the adjective meaning someone who has a lot of learning. Scholarly, they are a scholar, bookish, they read a lot of books. All of that makes you erudite, well-educated, essentially. Full of erudition, which basically means education. Pejorative. I've used that word a few times in explaining definitions. It has bad connotations, it's disparaging. It's essentially an insult. Take the word pedantic. Some people think that just means careful, but actually it's pejorative. It has bad connotations, it's an insult. It means you pay too much attention to detail. So the word pedantic is pejorative. It has an insulting connotation or secondary meaning. Pejorative. Penury. An oppressive lack of resource, severe poverty. You can just remember that penury means severe poverty, not just a little bit of poverty. To deride. To speak of or treat with contempt, to mock. To be insulting towards, to be pejorative towards. To deride someone is to take the mickey, to mock them. Rarify. To make thinner or sparser. So that is the original definition of rarefy, something that is made thinner or sparser. But to be honest, the word is used, and for the GRE would be used, in this other way. Rarefied air is thin air, like when you reach high up on a mountain. When you go up Everest, for example, the air is thinner, there's less oxygen. And so rarefied air means a space that's limited to the elite limited to the upper echelons of society. So the rarefied air of that gentleman's club, or the rarefied mannerisms of the upper class, like reserved only for the elite, exclusive, private, exalted. And so yes, technically, literally, rarefy means to make thinner, or sparser, less common, more spread out. But when you read the word rarefied air, or the rarefied X, Y, Z, it means limited to those exclusive set of people, usually upper class people. Rarified or rarify. Redress, fantastic word to learn, not in other lists. Relief from wrong or injury. You need to redress that wrong. You need to undo it and help relieve it. Basically to correct an error, to set it right. You need to redress the mistakes of your past. Undo the wrongs and correct them. Redress. Rejoinder. Response. Notice all these words begin with re because it's in reaction to something else. A rejoinder is a sharp response to someone's words. So they insult you and you give a quick rejoinder, a quick response. Diffident. Lacking self-confidence. Essentially the opposite of confidence. To have confidence is to have faith in yourself. Fide means faith. So diffident lacks faith in yourself. Maybe shy or timid. Dilatory. Intended to delay. She has been dilatory in appointing her new assistant. Delayed, slow. Dilatory. Exponent. I just did a video. My last video on the channel was on exponents. So I should know this. One who champions or advocates. So of course we have the classic clash of quant and verbal. So in quant, an exponent, well I won't explain it but I've just done an hour and a half video on it so do check out that video. 
But in verbal, the word means something different. To be an exponent for something means to be an advocate for that thing, a supporter of that thing, a propagator of that idea. I'm a great exponent of free bus rides, a champion of that idea, a supporter of it, an exponent of it. I think it's pronounced when you're using it in that way, an exponent of that thing. Slight difference in pronunciation. And now we have peripatetic. Very interesting and funny word to pronounce, peripatetic. Very fun word actually, still worth knowing. Wandering from place to place, especially on foot. Very much like the word nomadic or itinerant. Someone who doesn't really have a fixed abode, a fixed home, they just wander around, usually working in one location and then another. Obviously less common these days to walk about on foot, but the idea still remains. The idea of a peripatetic wanderer who doesn't have a fixed home. Peri or pedi usually meaning to do with the feet. Peripatetic. Numismatics. Wow, I've heard of that word, but I don't actually know it. Numismatics. I'm going to learn a new word here. Coin collecting. Wow, numismatics. I never, I mean, I've heard the word, but numismatics. I never knew that. Okay, someone who is a coin collector or coin collecting. Numismatics. How are we going to remember that? Numis is a bit like number and coins have numbers on them. Numismatics. I have learned a new word. That is cool. Numismatics. Perspicacious. Fantastic word. One of my favourite words to know actually. Could come up and is a very fancy word to throw into conversations. Shrewd, astute or keen-witted. Smart, but I would say with a particular emphasis on can see the future coming. If someone is perspicacious, they see what's coming ahead of time. They're smart enough to figure out how things are going to go. They're shrewd and astute. They have good judgment about where things are going. They are perspicacious. Or another way to say that is they are demonstrating perspicacity. <laughs> very fancy, very cool word, in my opinion. Obdurate. Classic. Hardened in feeling, resistant to persuasion, that has appeared in other vocab lists of mine. Basically, it means stubborn. If you're obdurate, you are stubborn. He is an obdurate gentleman, a stubborn one. Dilettante, fantastic word. Someone with amateurish or superficial interest in a topic. You know how rich people pick up loads of little hobbies and they don't really spend much time on each one? They are being a dilettante, an amateur, doesn't really have a deep interest in what they're doing. So it's kind of a pejorative, slightly insulting word to call someone a dilettante. A bit like a dabbler. They're not really treating it too seriously, they're just dabbling. Restive. Impatient, uneasy or restless. Slight irony with this word is the word restive sounds like having a rest, but it's the opposite. It's restless, uneasy, impatient, the restive crowd started shouting louder and louder. Phalanx, fantastic word. Compact or close-knit body of people, animals or things. I think it comes from some ancient warriors. I can't remember who they were. Maybe the Hittites or something in Persia who used to have guards on either side of their generals and in formations on the battlefield. There were groups of men basically with spears who stood either side, like flanking them to guard. So I think a better definition of phalanx rather than to say compact or close-knit is to phalanx something, is to flank it usually in a guarding sense. She walked towards the court with a phalanx of bodyguards, basically surrounding her, flanking her, guarding her sides, tightly packed together like a group of spearmen protecting their general. Phalanx. Disabuse. To set right to free from error. Let me disabuse you of that notion. Let me correct you on that point. So maybe someone's got an incorrect idea in their head and you are going to disabuse them of that thought. Correct their error. Refute their argument. Disabuse them. Discern. To perceive or recognise. To be discerning is a bit like to be perspicacious. You've got good judgement and you can decide clearly what's right or wrong. Although perspicacious, as we talked about, is more about the future, whereas discerning is about decisions happening now. You can recognise what's right and wrong, you can discern something. Obviously, there is also the literal sense of discern, meaning literally to perceive something with your eyes. 
I discerned a faint glimmer of light on the horizon. I saw it, I perceived it, I recognised it. But to be discerning in a more metaphorical sense is someone with good and clear judgement. Philistine, fantastic word, could come up. A person who is guided by materialism and is disdainful of intellectual or artistic values. Very pejorative and insulting. If you describe someone as a Philistine, you say they're not smart, they don't care about fancy things, creative things, they only care about material goods. A bit like a caveman, maybe, a Philistine. Obviously a pejorative insult, going back to ancient times, because the Philistines were an actual biblical tribe. So people who don't really care about intelligent things, a bit caveman-like, they just care about resources and material goods. Disparate. Fundamentally different, entirely unalike. We have two disparate goals. Unreconcilable goals, they're just very different, very disparate. Jingoism, great word to know. Belligerent support of one's country. Obnoxious patriotism, jingoism. A bit like the word chauvinism, and with connotations of xenophobia. Jingoism means you are aggressively or obnoxiously patriotic. Take it a bit too far, maybe nationalistic. Inquest, an investigation, an inquiry. A quest into the heart of the matter is an inquest. It's an inquiry, an investigation. Keen, having a sharp edge, intellectually sharp, perceptive. Obviously to be keen on something is to be eager about something but you can also be keen in a secondary way. He discerned what was right with keen judgment, sharp, perceptive, discerning, as we talked about earlier. Latent, potential that is not readily apparent. He had a lot of latent football ability. He just hadn't had much training. He's got a lot of potential, but you just can't see it right now because he hasn't had the right training. Or her startup idea is still latent. It's still a bit inactive. It's got potential, but it's still dormant. It hasn't yet been used or activated. Latent, fantastic word. Inculcate. We talked about being a demagogue earlier. Well, a demagogue likes to inculcate, to teach, to impress in the mind, not in a good way. The word inculcate is pejorative. It means very similar to brainwashing. You are changing people's minds, often at a young age, with radical dogmatic ideas. For example, you might inculcate jingoism onto children, forcing them to be obnoxiously patriotic, to inculcate. Very interesting, usable word there. Oblique, indirect or evasive, misleading or devious. That was an oblique reference to your father, wasn't it? You didn't want to name him directly, but you were being indirect. So the best word there to sum up oblique, I think, is indirect. You intended that reference, but you didn't want to say it kind of openly and obviously. In other words, implicit. It's implicit in their words, but not stated obviously. Now, there are also oblique angles, slanting angles in mathematics, but that's a different story. And the final word for today is lavish. To lavish praise on someone means to cover them in praise, to be generous, unsparing, or extravagant with your praise. Or maybe to lavish sauce on top of that dish. You're just pouring it all over so the dish is covered in sauce. So to lavish is to pour on being extremely generous with that thing, almost too generous. But it's definitely a praising word, usually used in the phrase to lavish praise on someone. And with that, please do feel free to lavish praise on me in the comments or or not, and just leave a like. Either way, thank you for getting to the end and I'll see you in the next video in this series.